How's it going everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you as a review of the Nike Zoom Vimero 5 in this wheatgrass and cacao wow colorway. So this is a colorway of the Nike Zoom Vimero 5 which actually dropped I believe back in February of this year. But these were on sale over at Livestock and I managed to grab my size for a very decent price. So the original retail price for this shoe was 160 US dollars or $210 here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is wheatgrass, gold suede, and cacao wow. And I've kind of been bitten by the Zoom Vimero 5 bug, so I've been keeping my eye on any colorway that's going on sale because I'm a huge fan of the comfort and the everyday wearability of this shoe, which is why I was very excited to pick these up on a discount. So even though the Nike Zoom Vimero 5 originally released as a running shoe, nowadays it's worn much more commonly as just an everyday casual use shoe, which is great for those looking for a very comfortable sneaker option. So diving straight into the details and the makeup of this shoe, you'll see that the majority of the upper is crafted out of mesh in this honeycomb shape pattern. Overlaid on top of the toe box, we have these two strips of synthetic leather in brown, and this synthetic brown leather covers the front toe cap as well, along with a silver stripe of this reflective 3M, which is featured on both sides. Moving downwards next to this, we have a wheat colored synthetic nubuck, and then next to this, we have more of that brown colored leather with two strips of reflective 3M in silver. The middle of the shoe is covered in this TPU cage, which has a rubberized feel and texture to it. And this helps to secure and contain the sides of your foot in place. Overlaid on top of this, we have a synthetic swoosh, which is colored in a pale orange tone with an outline of white on the edges. And then next to this, we have more of that synthetic brown leather with another two strips of reflective 3M once again. Surrounding the top portion of the ankle collar area, we have more of that beige colored mesh that we saw earlier on the toe box. And then wrapping around the back of the heel, we have more synthetic brown leather with reflective 3M strips once again. And we have an orange colored swoosh in the middle. And then beneath this, here we have a TPU heel cup, which is carved out in this triangular pattern. And this gives you added structure and support for the back end of the sneaker. As far as the laces go, so these only come with one lace option and they're a oval shaped lace done in this cream or off-white color. Underneath this, the tongue is primarily constructed out of that same mesh that we saw on the toe box, but we have this orange colored nylon strip running down the center and in the center of this, we have a reflective 3M strip. The top of the tongue, however, is slightly padded and it's covered in more of a tightly wound brown colored mesh and we have a rectangular tag on the top with Nike Vimero 5 branding. The interior of the shoe is also covered in a brown colored mesh and this inner collar of the shoe is slightly padded. And then as far as the insoles go, so these come with an upgraded insole compared to a normal Nike shoe. So on the top you'll see it's covered in a brown colored textile and we have Bill Bowerman who is the co-founder of Nike, his branding is stamped onto the heel. But if you flip the insole over to the other side, you'll see that they utilize a similar insole to the insole found on the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro which is much more of a styrofoam feeling insole as opposed to a typical foam. So initially this feels very stiff, but they really break in and form to the shape of the wearer's foot. So over time, it feels much more comfortable than a standard foam insole. So the upper of the Zoom Vermeero 5 sits atop this full length Cushlon foam midsole, which is much more of a responsive foam compared to your standard EVA. In case within the midsole but not visible to the eye, we have both heel and forefoot zoom air units, which gives you that added level of responsiveness and bounce back. And then finally, turning this pair over to the bottom. So this outsole is crafted using brown colored rubber in this retro looking waffle style traction pattern. We have these horizontal grooves to give you added flexibility. And then in the middle, we have this dark tan colored TPU shank plate, which is there to give you additional midfoot support and torsional rigidity. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these Zoom Vimero 5s. And for those wondering about sizing, so overall these fit like any other Zoom Vimero 5. So I personally go true to size. My foot measures as a true size 10 slightly on the wider side, meaning when I step on a Brannock device at a shoe store, I'm actually a size 10 in between a D and an E width. So I got these in a size 10 and they fit me perfectly and extremely comfortably. Moving on to the comfort of this shoe, so the Zoom Vermeero 5 is an extremely comfortable shoe, which is one of the main reasons why I'm so excited to add a ton of colorways to my collection and rotation. So like I mentioned just earlier, this midsole combines both Cushlon and Zoom Air. So that means it's going to have a bit of that pillowy, soft feel underfoot, but because they're Zoom Air, it still gives you a bit of that springboard effect and that responsiveness so that when your foot makes impact on the midsole, you're going to feel some of that rebound and that energy return. So by combining two of those technologies, it makes sure it gives you a good combination of softness and responsiveness. And the upper of the shoe is also very lightweight and breathable too. 
so this makes it a very solid shoe in the hot summer months. Finally, in terms of the quality and the craftsmanship, so because these were originally intended to be running shoes, the materials used on the shoe are all synthetic. So we have a bunch of synthetic leathers, a bunch of meshes and plastic or TPU overlays. So there's nothing special, nothing good about the material quality. And in terms of the build and the craftsmanship, it wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't perfect. My pair specifically had a lot of extra loose threads that to trim off myself. But aside from that, it wasn't too bad. The paint job in the midsole was decent and the panels were cut and stitched on consistently so I really had no major complaints about this pair whatsoever. So with all that out of the way now let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. All in all, I'd say that this is a solid colorway of the Nike Zoom Vermeero 5. My first impression when I saw this pair is that it kind of gives off that retro 70s kind of look. With the combination of the brown, the tans, and the orange, it really has that retro flavor. So because of that, it's not going to be a colorway for everyone. I don't think this is necessarily the easiest colorway to pull off, but for the price that I was able to grab these for, and knowing that this is going to be one of those shoes that I just leave by the door, and I know eventually they're going to get beat, it's really a shoe that I just didn't want to pass up. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this Nike Zoom Vermeero 5 in this wheatgrass colorway? What are your thoughts on the silhouette in general? And what are your thoughts on this specific colorway? Would this be a cop for you for the right price? Or are you just not a fan of this colorway and it would be an easy pass? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review and hopefully I helped you make a decision one way or another. Thank you for your continued love and support and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.